Hey everybody, it's JT from VapeStarters.net. Um, want to do a quick video, a breakdown slash sort of tutorial on the Fogger V2. Um, I recently posted a review on this atomizer, really enjoying it a lot right now. So kind of wanted to do a little breakdown that I didn't do in my review. Um, so we will get to it. I'm going to have a vape real quick. All right. Hope everybody had a happy Halloween and was safe. And uh, I take candy donations at all times. So the Fogger V2. Um, disassembly real quick. Obviously drip tip, I'll set this over here, and the top cap here, just unscrew it. Not very many threads hold that on, so it's fairly easy and quick to remove. And the glass tank is not threaded on, it's just press fitted. That bottom O-ring holds it on, so you just maybe a little twist and a pull off. It is off. Then you have kind of the chimney thing thing. <clears throat> That's what I'll call it. So we will unscrew this. Set this aside as well. And there's your base. I'm going to be honest with you folks. The coil, I've already put this on off camera. Um, it's tough. I'm not going to lie, it, it's tough for me. It doesn't come apart any more than this. Uh, and as you can see, the screws are recessed and there's this big wall all around here. It's, it's a bit tough to get that coil in there. I'm sure I'll get a lot of comments about how easy it is and, oh, it was a breeze and that's cool. Maybe I'm really bad at this and that's fine. But it was tough. It was not something I was willing to do on camera. It would have taken far too long. And um, viewers would have stopped watching. And I would have gotten more aggravated. So, um, with a rebuildable like this, I'm giving the viewer a certain amount of credit already. Okay? You have some experience rebuilding coils. So actually getting this coil installed in the base of this atomizer is something you're going to have to work out for yourself, honestly. Um, as much as I could try to explain it, basically, you just unscrew these and you have to get it where when you run your wick through there, it's going to come through these channels on the outside, okay? So, for the most part, you want your coil lined up over the air hole. Lined up with those channels. Okay, I'll show you like, that's kind of the line you want it. You're going to have to be the one to do it, and it might be a little frustrating. You might be awesome, I might be horrible, and uh, it could be easy for everybody. But anyway... There it is. My coil is already installed. Um, at this point, I have found the best wicking material to be cotton. Um, <clears throat> I suggest try whatever you like. Try stainless steel mesh. Try your silica. Um, see what works best for you. I had no luck with stainless steel mesh, I had no luck with silica, so the minute I put a cotton build on mine, it, it turned around and I was extremely, extremely pleased with the performance. So basically I'm just going to kind of twist this cotton a little bit so I can get it started to feed through my coil, and again this is another thing that doesn't necessarily need to be done on camera, but I'm going to try to do it and keep everything visible. 
as visible as possible. Um, you know, I'll use a little tool sometimes. That's what she said. No, that's not what, that's what he said. Ha. <laughs> use a little tool or even a needle, you know, a syringe with a needle on there to somewhat eh, help things along. Eh. Anyway, this is a process that if you are a rebuilder, chances are, in a lot of ways, it's a love-hate relationship thing. <clears throat> I enjoy rebuilding. I get aggravated. Just like everyone else, or with any other hobby, just because you enjoy it does not mean you don't get aggravated with certain builds, certain times. Sometimes your hands just don't want to work. You know, sometimes your brain just doesn't want to work. So anyway, basically what I'm doing, and I know it's kind of hard to see maybe, but I'm just feeding my waking material through my coil, okay? And I feel like I'm okay with it right there. <clears throat> so this is basically what you have now. You've got your coil in there. Hopefully you didn't shift it around or tweak it too much. There's your coil in there. At this point, I'm not going to trim it exactly to size, but I will trim some of the excess off. And lay it in these channels. Um, I want to say really quick, that the Fogger V2 comes with a little packet, okay? Little flathead screwdriver, some extra O-rings there, and then these clear, smaller O-rings, all right? When I got mine, like I said, it had a build on it from my buddy at vapescafe.com. Um, that small ring goes over here to somewhat hold your wick down okay and then this goes on and it kind of seals up those threads as I was looking online for advice um, a lot of people said they do not use those so recently I have not been using them I have had good luck but and they're, they're kind of tough to install again for me I shot a couple clear across the room but basically, this would go around there, and it would hold down your waking material. I'll lay right around there, okay? Anyway, you make the call. If you have issues, if you want to be safe, use it. Um, I'm under the impression that the people that made this probably have a good idea what works best, but I could be wrong. So, at this point, I... Actually, no, I'm not going to put it on a mod. I'm going to, uh, I lied, I am. Sorry. Just let me grab one really quick. I'll tell you right now, basically the hard part or the most aggravating part of this build is just getting your coil lined up and getting it um, attached to the positive and negative post in there. Um, I really think that this cotton style build is the way to go and that's based on a lot of advice I got and my experience personally. So I I always, not always, I just started using cotton, but I like to get that cotton a little bit damp with a little bit of juice before I dry fire it too much. Um, I'm cool with that. So at this point, let me just say now, this glass 
hugs pretty tight onto there so there is not a lot of extra wick material that needs to be left sticking out um, a good way to do it in my opinion is go ahead and attach what I call the little chimney thing thing okay actually I'm sorry I'm sorry before you do that let's prime that wick just a little I know that's not really on camera let's get a little juice on there so you've got a head start once you get it built now we will attach the chimney thing thing okay so there you go at this point you'll need to trim your excess wick uh, and if you're experimenting and you don't really know how much to cut off cut a little at a time uh, if you want to leave as much as possible just just remember you can make it shorter but you can't make it longer and that's what she said I uh, thank you very much um, snipping some of that off as you can see there is not much wick material gonna be left sticking out so let's see if it's gonna work out I want to try to keep that wick material off of the o-ring to prevent a chance of leaking so let's see if we can do that I'm cool with that okay there you go glass tank is installed again at this point I want to remove it from this mod again so I can get a better angle on it for you if possible okay now the filling hole right up top flathead screwdriver very tiny screw be careful not to lose that and as I use with most things I like to use a syringe I uh, heard some advice from a guy that says if you use like a, uh, a plastic tip for a syringe or some of the juice bottles that have not really a needle style but a little closer to that, um, if you apply juice with pressure and don't let air get in, you're going to flood that inside chamber and you're gonna have a bad time so that's enough for the purpose of this video and you just add some juice All right. I will replace the fill screw. Screw that on down. And top cap on. Couple screws and it's tightened down. And you're all good. Now the airflow control ring, I didn't really talk much about that in my review but it's the knurled piece down here okay down here at the bottom and I'm not sure if they will show up on camera I'm gonna try and see but screwed all the way up towards the top of the atomizer that's the most open airflow setting um, and all the way down towards the base of the atomizer that will be the tightest draw setting I prefer it at its most open setting 
Um, for an atomizer like this, it, it really has really good airflow. I really enjoy it. Um, I have used it so, so often. Really happy with it. Um, I am going to have a quick vape. I realize that I'm off camera right now, and that's kind of lame. But that's what I'm going to do. It takes pretty much any drip tip. That's pretty nice. I will say that I've found some drip tips that uh, that don't quite sit flush. I'll show you an example. And you see that gap there? Right here. That should be flush. That drives me crazy, but it's all good. The uh, the drip tip that comes with it is actually really nice. I've been using it on this, but on other atomizers as well. I really like that drip tip. So, I'm going to have a quick vape. Again, I'm sorry it's not on camera. Excellent. Excellent. I love the fogger. I love this cotton build. Um... It's a little frustrating to install your actual coil, like I said, but it's worth it. Um, for under 30 bucks, I, I don't think you can beat this at all. Honestly, I prefer it over the K-Fun Lite clone from EH Pro. The Fogger V2, I really like it. Hopefully, between the review and this quick video, you can form a good opinion, save some money, or I might... Uh, encourage you to go spend some money but vapescafe.com $29.99 and a 10% off coupon is the number 10 off 10OFF gives you 10% off the fogger I'm not sure how long that's going to last so if you're interested try to jump on it that's me folks I know these tutorials aren't the best quality, but I'm getting better and I'm just trying to put them out there for you. So thanks everybody. We'll see you next time.